Happy Saturday, everybody. You're yeah, welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Q. Boating, and today is going to be very beautiful. You'll find out why. Many thanks to my sponsors, the Movin Pick Ambassador Hotel, GTP, and the One to One Bar. We'll be right back. The woman on the move is a female entrepreneur. She's really working hard, pressing on towards her goals. Let's see who she is this week. Genevieve's desire to start up a fashion school was born from the unsatisfactory experiences from her designers. She then left her well-paying job to pick up this challenge where she established a fashion school with the aim of also helping other women. Before Jenshila, I trained as a health coach. I was working with some other companies, but I have passion for fashion. So doing all those things, other people were sewing for me or teaching for me to sell. But when it comes to alteration, if there's a problem with the garment and we need to do something about it, they are reluctant to face it. That was what pushed me to the fashion school. The school offers a couple of courses, including business management, to enable students manage their own businesses after school. We run a one-year intensive training in fashion design, illustration, and business management. So that by the time you complete the one year, you will not only know how to stitch a garment, you will not only know how to put your thoughts and ideas into sketches and drawing, but also know how to set up your own business and be your own boss lady. Some students are excited about the school. I was working as a secretary. I left that for fashion because I love fashion. You can just walk up to a tutor if you have any problem at all. For them, it hasn't just been talking, talking, talking. They've built a relationship with us. I really didn't like anyone bossing me around, so I wanted to be a boss of my own. That's why I came to the National Park. It's been good. I've learned a lot. I stitch my own garments now. But why would you leave what you were doing earlier for fashion? Oh, that is where this is happiness. Anyone who wants to pursue fashion as a career and has the dream to be a fashion designer, I would recommend it to them that they should come to Jenshila Fashion Academy. It's where your dreams will be realized. Jenshila is a fashion school and a clothing line that is aimed at making a mark in the fashion industry. Unfortunately, the business suffered a temporary setback, but that will not deter her. It's not been smooth, but God has been faithful. Acquiring a place for the establishment of the school very, very expensive. If you want to do it right, I could have just done it anyhow, but I didn't learn it anyhow, so I wanted to do it right. Two years ago, we started with uh, five students. Down the lane, we can comfortably boast of 60 students in all who are doing very well. With the numerous challenges, Genevieve, a mother of four, says she still makes time for family and work. Every African or Ghanaian woman, we are born entrepreneurs. You learn how to manage your time. You wake up, you take care of yourself, you take care of the house, you run other errands and take care of the house chores. And also how to handle your husband when you get married. For now, Jen Sheila craves of seeing herself as one of the topmost brands in fashion. In five to ten years' time, we believe in God to expand to other regions. Currently, we can boast of students coming all the way from all the northern regions, Sekendi, Takaradi, Takwa, and the rest. Currently, we are opening a branch in Keta, in the Volta region, just to impact lives in that community.
Our winning woman for today is all about beauty. She's a beauty queen. She's the former Miss Liberia. She actually won in 2006. Congratulations then. Thank and you. And you're very welcome to Ghana and to the Today's Woman Show. I'm so glad to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I feel at home whenever I'm in Ghana, and I feel more at home on your couch. Oh, thank today. you so much. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing I want us to discuss first, before we even go in, the notion about beauty pageants. Now, I won Miss Teen Ghana in 1996, and I remember my wow. dad was so upset. He didn't want me to, to, to be a part of the pageant yeah. because then at that time, there was this whole notion about, you know, if you go into like a beauty uh, competition or like your pageant is to do with, you know, all sorts of things, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes, you know, people just assume that it's for men, you know, prostitution. I mean, all of that, really. A lot mm -hmm. of people had that mindset. Um, what do you think about it? Has it changed? Is it the same in Liberia? I don't know. And what do you think really about women entering, you know, a beauty pageant? Well, it's the same in Liberia. And I think it's the same thing all over the world, particularly in Africa. Um, when I won the pageant in 2006, it had garnered all types of, you know, um, press. Before mm. I won, you know, there was so much negativity surrounding it. Although it's a prestigious title, people had their own perceptions about it. And I had to work really hard to change that, that you can be a young woman and you enter a pageant, you are more like an ambassador. Mm -hmm. Instead of being objectified, I feel like it is a platform through which young women can champion so many causes mm -hmm. and they can each be empowered to represent their countries around the world. Yeah. So um, I worked really hard during my time. I, I had a platform. And I think as a young woman, when you're entering a pageant, you should have a purpose. Mm. For me, the reason for entering Miss Liberia was to you know, have a louder voice. So you entered with that, you had that in mind. In that was mind. your plan. Yes. Okay. To okay. have a bigger voice and a bigger platform to champion all of the causes I was passionate about. So I used it to do that, reach out to my people, serve them, you know, serve as a role model mm. for other young women. And when the title was over, I was really excited to let it go really? because it was for only a year. Yes, so it's always a year, isn't to, it? Yeah, yeah. I to let that Yeah, go. I think you're right because even when I won the pageant mm. as well, I had the opportunity to go on radio to talk about different issues. Mm -hmm. The thing with the teenage pageants at that time, mm. you wouldn't wear any like swimsuit mm -hmm. or anything. And I think really the issue in Africa is the exposure of, yes, of the body, definitely. really. I think that, that's, that's where the difficulty, and, and I think when I did tell my dad that we won't be wearing that, then he was okay. <laughs> but initially, it's just like, yeah. I don't want my daughter walking on a, you know, on you a, know, stage. On a stage, you know, and you know, in, in a swimsuit True. or anything like that. Now, how, how was it like going to Miss World? Because I know you went to Miss World as well. Yes. Yes. It was, Miss World was a beautiful journey. It was my first time leaving the continent. Okay. Because my family and I had lived in other parts of the continent, and this was my first time going outside. Mm -hmm. So um, I won the title, and I had three weeks to prepare wow. for Miss World. So you can imagine the wow. pressure. Yes. So getting used to the new, you know, fame and popularity, and having to prepare yourself in the midst of all that. So I went to Warsaw, Poland. Uh, where I made 104 friends. I'm still wow. in touch with oh, most of them lovely. today. Um, Miss Boswana was my roommate, and I thought they were going to pair me up with maybe Miss Ghana or Miss Nigeria because we are from, from West Africa. Brand. But when I went, I was pleasantly surprised that they paired me up. So with, you go, they've already paired yeah, you. Yeah, they've already, choose, you don't choose just, your okay. roommate. And mm -hmm. they couldn't have picked. <laughs> a better roommate for me because she we had the same personality and it gave me the opportunity to learn about her country and see all of the similarities that we mm. have what i learned from that experience is that we are similar you know mm. on the continent we like to think you know that we are so different mm -hmm. but we are so similar and mm. we share similar challenges mm -hmm. victories Do you think it's just the the continent or just women generally women in general we we tend to think we are different but if you if you really pay attention to people People and hear their stories and show genuine interest in what they are doing, you're able to see the similarities. So going and there, what was your confidence level like? Going there, I was a young college girl when I won the pageant. I had done a lot of public speaking because I, was, I started broadcasting at 14, when okay. I was 13, 14, okay. and I was in my press club, the press club, the debate team, the writers club throughout high school. 
even when I entered the university, I mm -hmm. was into student politics and all of that wow. on campus. Wow. So mm -hmm. I already had my little, you know, confidence <laughs> thing going on. <laughs> but this was on a global level. I had to take it to the global stage and not only represent myself, but you represent my country. country. So the pressure was there. But I just, in every situation, whether I'm new to it or not, I just like to have an open mind, mm. you know, go in and, and be myself, you know, and, and embrace other people, their cultures, learn more about them, and just relax and enjoy it. Right. And that's exactly what I did. So you didn't go with did. any intimidation. Did you feel intimidated by, by, by the other, you know, contestants? There were, you know, because Liberia had just come out of the war. Mm -hmm. So we had... Um, we had an interim government and we had our elections in 2005. Right. And so when Madam Sir Ellen Johnson Sirleaf became the president in 2006 when she was inaugurated, I was the first Miss Liberia under her oh, administration. Right. Okay. And she wasn't so keen on pageantry because okay. of the, you know, the perception right. that all oh, young women are being objectified or they're being paraded around. Mm. And so she was really interested in rebuilding the country. And I, in my own ambassadorial role, was also interested in changing the narrative around pageantry. So how did you change it? Were you able to? I was able, I believe, to a great extent because when I entered the pageant, it had a lot of negative press, like I said. Mm -hmm. And so I had to tell them that when you're entering a pageant, you don't necessarily have to be the it girl in mm -hmm. town because mm -hmm. I was all about my books. I wasn't a flashy, showy, showy girl in school. So the idea of me competing in a pageant, I wasn't a popular Monrovia girl. Our capital city is Monrovia. Mm -hmm. no, people they didn't really know me like that. So they were like, ah, why is she entering? She won't win. She's not a big time girl. I was like, you know, my friends from That's school. That's what they were actually saying. Some people were saying that I were, you know, I wasn't a big time girl. Big time girl is is a popular girl. She's flashy. She has, you know, when she moves, well, you, it, when, when she it. moves, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't. These days they call them big Jews, but I wasn't a big Jew, you know. So, but my friends knew that I was a big Jew when it came to my books. Mm. So they had the confidence in me. My family also supported me. And a lot of people said, "Go for it. You can mm. do it." And did you go in knowing you would win? Yes. You, you, you did I you? knew I would. So you win. weren't surprised. I wasn't surprised because when I was in high school, I was always winning. I was the valedictorian when I graduated from high school. I was the most eloquent student that year. Although from a humble beginning, I've always, it, it's always been that way for mm. me. I never like go into a space and just get lost in a crowd. I always You're stand always out. Yes. Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah. And do you think it's something that you have nurtured, like you have so, actually built up? Yeah. I'm talking about this because so many women out there are not even willing to Sometimes even come on the show. <laughs> Sometimes even come on, on this show. Oh, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready for TV and all that. Maybe say a word to women out there on confidence. What do you think? What is your definition of confidence? And how can a woman be confident? I think being confident means embracing yourself wholly for who you are, being real, being authentic. You know, that's confidence. Even in, uh, you know, amidst your flaws, you can still... You feel free to be vulnerable, share your story, tell your story, whether it's sad, whether it's a happy story, just tell it. Once you are yourself, people can see that. But if you fake it to keep it up, it, it will be so challenging. Confidence starts from believing in who you are, embracing your all, the good, the bad, the ugly, and just telling your truth and living it every day. That's awesome. That's amazing. That's a good word out there. I really like that. <laughs> now, you said you were in the Writers Club. So mm -hmm. now I'm not surprised because <laughs> I know you've written a book here mm -hmm. under Ducure Skies. Yeah. And you're actually the first. I've gone to so many book readings. And I, went, I, I came to your book reading yes. some months ago. It was yes. such a beautiful um, so evening. Much. And the poetry. How come you wrote poetry? What, what inspired you? Well, poetry, I started writing, uh, I was little when the, I was very young when the Civil War in Liberia started. Mm -hmm. I was like four years old when the war started. Mm, okay. And so during those years, I would escape to my books. You know, I always found a safe haven in my books. At four, did you know there was a war going on? Yes, you I knew, knew there was a four? war going on. But in the beginning, it seemed like 
an adventure because if you're a kid and you guys are running around, sometimes it seems like an adventure. But the thing with the war, it didn't give us the time to be children. We mm. had to grow up really fast, mm. you know, because that was what was happening. We didn't even get to know ourselves mm. when, you know, that became our reality. Mm -hmm. So um, during those years, I would read a lot. And I found, you know, that my books took me to countries that I hadn't been to. I would be in a bush somewhere hiding with my family or in a village somewhere or but in a town. How are you getting the books? The books, are, books always found their way to me. <laughs> 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 and my mom is a teacher, so okay. she was a teacher for 50 years. Oh, over 50 wow, years, yeah. wow. So I always, I have a, an older sibling who is like my backup mom. So she got me books. People would always give me books, and then when I became a teenager, I would save some of my lunch money and buy books. Oh. But there weren't like structured bookstores. I used to find them at the street corners. Mm. I would buy them. Guys would carry them around. Peddlers, you know, would take them yeah. around, and I would always buy my mm. books. Mm -hmm. So at that age, were you actually going through to school? You're going to school as well. Yeah, there were times. There were periods of stability when school would be open, so mm -hmm. we'd be in school. Mm -hmm. And then if something happened, or you know, the war broke out in where, at where we were, we would run to another safe place okay. and continue. But you'd be running with your books. I would all always the time, have my running books. With always your books. running. So what led you to actually write poetry? The poetry piece. It just became a way. I I feel like the way you can you can tell so many stories within one poem. Unlike prose, you have to go on and on and on and on. With poetry, you can just write a few lines and they can be really deep mm. and you can say a lot mm. in it. So it just happened naturally. I think it's a gift that, that God you know, bestowed upon me and it made sense to write my first book. So this is That's, your first this book. Is my, Congratulations. I, thank you. I, what's the response like? Now, when people read the poetry, yeah. do they understand it? Yes. Because obviously you have your inspiration, mm -hmm. you have your deep reason. So when you are writing, I was at the book reading, like yeah. I said. So I heard some of it. I have the book. I've read it. And it's actually deep. Yeah. And that day when you read, you will explain. Mm -hmm. Now, do people who just pick the book and read it understand? Yes. They do? They understand. What's the sort of feedback you get? I get feedback because the book talks about my own experiences experiences from um, inspiration from everyday happenings, other women's stories. And also you'll see a lot of feminist themed poems mm -hmm, in the book mm -hmm. that will inspire women, encourage mm -hmm. them to pick up, you know, the broken pieces or just find that confidence that we spoke about to keep it going. That's, so when mm -hmm. people read the book, whether it is a woman, you know, who has had a lot of children and is struggling with body image issues, mm. or it is a woman who um, maybe had a miscarriage mm. or lost a baby, mm. or it is someone... So you were writing certain things that you haven't been through yourself, yes, but you're just imagining, imagining it and then putting it into words. Into words yeah. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. You're talking about body image now. It leads me to ask you, mm -hmm. that: did you ever have the pressure to sort of maintain a certain body weight as a beauty queen? Because I know a lot of the time people see past beauty queens mm, yeah. and it's always like, look how she's put on weight. Yes. <laughs> Miss so so, so and so, so this yes, year. Yeah. You know, you, you know, and all of that. So is there like a sort of pressure? And I think that's where the negativity it's sometimes come in, comes yeah. in when, when it comes to beauty. Mm -hmm. Because we're all assuming that a beauty queen should be a particular size. Yes. But you can be a beauty queen no matter what your size Inside is. Now is. what do you think about that, being a beauty queen yourself? Well, the thing with Miss Liberia, I told people when I won the title that it wasn't a career for me. Okay. They even had a newspaper where they said <laughs> Miss Liberia is not my career. <laughs> yes, because I said that. So after the pageant, I just snapped back into reality. I went back into being a normal college student because I had to finish the mm. university. So I was even Miss Liberia and still going to school. Mm. And I would sit with my classmates. I tried to be as normal as possible. And so, so it didn't get to your head. It didn't really get to me. You know, I changed in so many ways for the better. I made new friends. I got more exposure, mm. but I try to stay as normal as possible. Mm -hmm. So today you see me in Makola, you know, we have our Makola market in Liberia, it's called Waterside Market. Okay. You will see me Waterside Market buying my cloth, and then you will see me at another event with my heels, and then you will see me maybe eating GB, it's like the uh, Ghanaian equivalent of fufu. 
okay, you will see okay. me eating it, you will see me eating. I mean, I just tried to be as normal as possible. And I wasn't under pressure to maintain mm. the weight, but subconsciously there is pressure, mm -hmm. as you said, because mm -hmm. people will see you and they will say, oh, you know, this other ex-beauty queen has gained a lot of weight, yeah. like you said. Yeah. Um, and I think I didn't really put a lot of pressure on myself mm. to live up to that expectation. It just worked out that I maintained the weight over the years. Um, maybe it's good genes or good yeah, metabolism. Maybe, yeah, yeah, but yeah. What's your definition of a queen? A queen is a woman. I, I believe in authenticity. I believe in being yourself. You know, there is a quote by Howard Thurman that really inspires me, and I use it in most of my you know, interviews or interactions to encourage others. It says, do not ask yourself what the world needs. Mm. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and mm. then go out and do that because what the world needs is someone who has come alive. So a queen wow. comes alive. Wow. She, she does. She charts her own course. She lives life according to God's terms and her own terms. Mm. And she's not afraid to shine. Mm. She's not afraid to shine, and as she so, shines... So can we say every woman is a queen? Every woman is a queen. I believe yeah, so. And if you shine and allow other women to shine, you're a queen. So that's the ladies. I like what she said. Mm -hmm. You are a queen if you allow others to shine. Okay. So if you're not allowing others to shine, you're not a queen. But I'm sure you are a queen, so you must allow <laughs> others to shine. I love that. Absolutely. I love that. I really, really like that. Now, what about um, mentorship? Do you yeah. mentor younger mm -hmm. yeah. ladies, and what do they come up to you you know, for what are their issues? And I know you've been to Ghana a couple of times. Yeah. What's the difference? What would you say? The difference between Liberia and Ghana? Yes, in like in terms, terms of, of um, um, mentorship, younger ladies looking up to, 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 to other women, to older women, you know, and all of that. Is the support there? I think uh, uh, with, with regards to mentorship, I have an initiative that I, you know, where I, I work with girls. It's called the Sexy Like a Book initiative sexy like a book. like a book okay so i'm all about books as you know so i was able to so it's almost like channeling their minds to see themselves as sexy because they are they actually have like know the no book, book like yes. can read and study and everything definitely That's good. thank you okay and they can be visionaries they can be creative just to change their perception the way they view education and mm. literacy so mm. We had the Sexy Like a Book initiative. Initially, when I won the title, girls would reach out to me a lot, mm -hmm. and they would reach out merely because of the flashiness associated with mm. Miss Liberia. Oh, you know, I want to be a mentee, or I want to work with you, I want to get to know you. And some of them would come, maybe they wanted me to take them out for, to entertainment centers. Mm. And what they would see on social media would be totally different from who I am as a person. Mm. Very low-key, laid-back, structured. But if you're low-key and laid-back, mm -hmm. is that not reflecting on social media? Do you see? That's what that, I mean, yeah. I'm asking this because people are living different lives. Yeah. So on social media, there's somebody else. Yeah. And in real life, there's somebody else. But yeah. I think that like being authentic is being who you are no matter where you are. Definitely. So do you, do you see what I mean? I think I'm low-key. I wouldn't necessarily say like quiet. I'm not necessarily a quiet person, but I, I tend to be a bit reserved, like mm. to keep parts of myself for myself. Right. Because I believe you have to have your own sanctuary. Sort of like, okay. You know, you okay. can't overshare. Mm. You can share, you can be real, you mm -hmm. can inspire other people, mm -hmm. but what do you go home to? Mm -hmm. You need mm -hmm. that space, especially if you're an artist for okay. creativity, okay. for prayer, for meditation and all mm. of that. So if you put everything on the internet, what do you go home to? So what would you say are the negative things on social media now? The negative generally, things generally. on social media, like there was a time I was following you. I, I okay. still follow you. And okay. then I saw you, you posted something about like what you like. Mm -hmm. And that really stuck uh, okay, with me. Okay, I remember. People... People follow people because somebody followed you. You want to follow them back. Follow what you like. Mm. Like what you like. Mm. So I think social media really influences people in a way. The, the negative things I've seen is that people, people don't know the backstory mm. to a success. Mm. You know, if you achieve something productive or a milestone, people aren't there to see what happened. You know, the journey. Right. You know, if you put out something, oh, yeah, she did this, but you're not there mm. to 
get the backstory on mm -hmm. how the person achieved that particular milestone. So I think that's where authenticity comes in mm. as well. Sometimes being vulnerable with our mm. audiences or our followers and saying that, yes, I'm an overachiever. I do, you know, do a lot of things and mm -hmm. juggle so many things, but there's also a challenging part of it. Mm. And don't think it's all easy. It's not like you're trying to be ungrateful or to complain, but just to encourage somebody mm. because sometimes when you are behind the scenes, sometimes you're working on like multiple projects and people only get to see maybe Just five yes, minutes or a second yes, when you post yes. it. And they think, ah, something that took, took 20 years, they only saw it within a few seconds. So do you think it's putting unnecessary pressure yes, on, it's on putting other people? Yes, a lot of pressure on yeah. people. Yeah. So they are sort of like like judging their success to somebody, to somebody else's, else's one-minute one post. Minute post. But yeah. they haven't seen, seen the, the behind the scenes. Yeah, so yes. I have a saying, as they make the behind the scenes, make your behind the scenes beautiful oh, okay. so instead of focusing only on the highlight reel of social media focus on your behind the scenes where you live does it align with what you're posting your bank account does it align <laughs> with your post <laughs> and other things you know <laughs> not necessarily pressuring somebody but <laughs> so you write a lot of articles as well yes in magazines mm -hmm. and, and also would you call yourself a writer is that yes, what you're I doing full time yes. now mm -hmm. is that what you're doing full time yes that's what i do communications and and writing that's okay. what I do. So what brings time. you Ghana so often now? Because I've seen you here a couple of times. I like Ghana a lot. You know, I, I stayed in Cote d'Ivoire for about four to five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's my other country. And Ghana has become my other yeah, yeah. country <laughs> as well. So I'm constantly battling between the two. Is it Cote d'Ivoire is it Ghana? But Ghana has been winning a lot of late. Oh, thank you. Of course, we have so many similarities. <laughs> Ghana and Liberia are so similar. Really? But you people wouldn't believe it. We have similar food. Like the palm nut soup, we have okay, it in Nigeria, you have palm nut soup. but we call it palm butter. But is it like the soup? Like it's, the, the, it's, not, it's thicker than the one okay, you have okay. here. That's why we call it palm butter. But you enjoy butter. our food? I enjoy Ghanaian food. I like Ghana a lot because um, you were talking about the mentorship with mm -hmm. the girls and mm -hmm. the women. I think Ghana here, girls have more access because the population is bigger than mm. Liberia. We are just 4.5 million people. In the whole of Liberia? The whole of Liberia. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and Ghana, the population makes it so that girls have access to a lot of things mm -hmm. that people don't have access, young women don't have access to in Liberia. And of course, we are still rebuilding after the war, after Ebola. Mm. So the challenges are many. But what I, I can't can say is that women like our former president, other strong Liberian women like Nobel laureates, Lehman Bowie, and all of those women, we have very strong women mm -hmm. who play a pivotal role in ending the war. Mm -hmm. And so girls, the younger ones, have been inspired. We have been inspired by them, yes. and those coming after us have we'll also found more. their voices, right. and they're inspired right. as well. That's amazing. So. I admire um, President mm -hmm. Elian Sirleaf so much. <laughs> yeah. um, and what would be your definition of a powerful woman? You were saying strong women. strong. So mm -hmm. who is a strong woman? Who is a powerful woman? A powerful woman is a woman who uses her voice for change. Mm -hmm. So she, she resurrects her, as she speaks, she resurrects the voices of so many women's voices that have been buried. I think we need to, I, we need to, we need to have a toast to that. Awesome. I love that. I absolutely love that. Please repeat Thank it. You. No, you have to tell me again. So a powerful woman is a woman who uses her voice. For change. For change. And she, as she, as she speaks, she, she resurrects the voices of other so women So you've heard that, ladies. Her. Now I'm asking you, are you a powerful woman? That is deep. <laughs> that is, and I love it so much because everybody has so many definitions, and there's no wrong one. Each one is right, but it has a different perception, a different like you know perspective, you know, to it. And it's it's an eye opener. I really really like this. That's thank amazing, you. Thank awesome, you so much. awesome, <laughs> thank you. awesome. I mean, I can't thank you enough for coming on the thank show you. today. It's been really amazing. Now I have a, a special gift for you. Mm. <laughs> I have a special <laughs> gift for you if I can find it. Okay, so this is the Rene Q love pillow. Okay, Ooh, love now it. what I'm doing, and this is what we've talked about today. 
Now, this is wow. just a little memoir to remind yourself of how special you are. Wow. A lot of women have issues with, you know, low self-esteem, mm. with lack of self-confidence, issues with body image, a lot of the time comparing ourselves to another mm. woman based upon certain standards and all that. And I'm really pushing out there that every woman should love themselves. Oh. You have to appreciate yourself for who you are. You are a unique being, yeah. whole as you are. Flaws, mistakes and all. You know, mm. you are who you are. So I always encourage my clients all the time. I say, every time you look in the mirror, tell yourself one thing you love about yes. you. It's so, so easy to talk a lot about somebody else, mm. but what are you saying about you? So today, I want you to share with the whole of Ghana Yay. one thing you love about you. Okay, and this is a gift from me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I love this. It's so nice. One thing I love about me is my um, inner strength. Um, Coming from war, being a child, you know, in conflict, I have been able to, God first, I've been able to overcome so many challenges to be where I am today and to get further in life, to go to where I'm going. So I, I, I thank God for the strength and I thank God for my love for other people and always seeing the good. And he's placed in people, always looking for the good God has placed That's in really people. nice. I think I love you even more. <laughs> After you. hearing that, thank you so much for coming <laughs> on you. the show. It's thank been awesome. So we'll be right back. Today's episode was so uplifting. I'm so encouraged and I hope you are as well. Our conversation today was extremely beautiful and I'm sure you are feeling beautiful as well. You are unique, you are confident, you are a queen because you are today's woman. I can't thank my sponsors enough. Movin Pick Ambassador Hotel, GTP, the one-to-one -one bar has been amazing. Don't miss it next week, Saturday, TV3, 11 a.m. and DSTV Channel 279. Follow me on Instagram at ReneQGH. Have a blessed weekend, everybody. You are beautiful.